It's Meredith from 102.1 The Edge. So excited and I have to say honored to, to be joined by Liz Fair this morning. This is so this is so cool. I never in a million years in my broadcasting career thought that I would get the opportunity to sit down and talk to a legend like you. Thank you, Meredith. That's so funny. <laughs> I, I did just brush my legendary teeth. So yeah, it's exciting <laughs> to be a legend. <laughs> so you've got uh, a brand new album coming out, Soberish, and this is like your first collection of new original material in like a decade. What does that feel like? Is it nerve wracking? It's not nerve wracking. It's very, it's intense because of the last year. Like we've, you know, it, it's changed. There's a different quality to it because we're doing this all remotely, you know, because of 2020 mm -hmm. and COVID. This is a very, it's strange not to put out something 10 years later as much as it is strange to put something out during this time period. You know, normally I'd be on tour. I would have been on tour for the last six months. You still are going to be touring with Alanis Morissette and Garbage. It's just been till, delayed till this fall, I believe. Yes, yes. I mean, what a bill, what a bill. What, what incredibly talented uh, group of musicians to join. I'm so excited. Yeah, you know, you look at them and it's so interesting because I look at that lineup and it's like, it's all these artists that I jammed to and I listened to and I would, I would go and see on tour in the nineties. And, you know, you've toured with Alanis Morissette before and, and opened for her and, and worked with her before. Did you ever think at that time that you'd be like, you know, down the road in 2021, <laughs> we are all going to be doing this together. Still? Right? No, not in a million years. And it was incredible to feel it come around full circle as I was starting to try to get my uh, bearings back in the music industry. So much had changed in the interim. You know, if you take 10 years off, which I was scoring television during that time, so much had changed. Social media had come to the fore. Streaming was like the central focus for, for how mm -hmm. people discover new music. And I had to kind of relearn the business completely. And that was interesting and challenging. And then just the idea that she would reach out to me and at this sort of late stage, throw me this like great opportunity felt really supportive, like woman to woman. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I love that that lineup too is like these strong, powerful women who I feel like really like blazed a trail in the nineties. And it's so great to see that, that you're still doing that. It's just, it was, it's so refreshing and it's such like a nostalgic callback and it was just, it's, it's so great. And I really hope that I'm able to see it <laughs> given the restrictions <laughs> in, in Canada right now. But, uh, hopefully things turn around. Yeah. You're not, you're not uh, exactly thrilled about bringing in giant tours. Are you guys? <laughs> like, <laughs> not I, yet. We're, <laughs> We're working. The epidemiologist in me says, "Like, good on ya." <laughs> <laughs> Something wrong. You take my hand. I play along, but I can tell.
I'm curious, someone like you, and, and from what I've read, and, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to get a lot from like your inspiration from other humans and from being out there in the world and interacting with people. And we've just had this terrible year where we've basically been told to not do these things. What kind of an impact did that have on songwriting and this album? It was really, really shocking, Meredith. I have to say, I always prided myself on the idea, the hypothetical that I would be creative no matter what. Like, I don't know if you've ever said to yourself, like, well, if I ever go to jail, I can write my novel or whatever it is that you say. It turns out that isolation completely stunted my creative process. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the ability to write as easily or create as easily. People are so important to my process. And I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was a, an interesting year for people, no matter what you do, you really learned a lot about how you operate as a person, whether you can thrive in this kind of world or whether you need. And I think shockingly, a lot of people discovered that they really do need that human connection and that inspiration and that social aspect of life. We really do. We really do. Yeah. And maybe this was a good pause and reset on a number of levels. I think we can take positives away from it in the sense of moving forward and what kind of lives we want to live. I think everyone had to think about what's really important to them in life. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about the game. The game is a, a song that I wrote a while ago. It's one of the older ones on the record. And it's been through five different production iterations, which is interesting. I recorded it with um, my live band. I recorded it in the past with the artist Ryan Adams when we were working on a record together. Um, I wrote it when I was about to go on tour with Amy Mann and Ted Leo for this uh, Christmas tour. And I can remember playing it in the wings of a venue there while all the um, venue staff was like moving heavy crates around and stuff. And I'm in the loading bay just playing this song on a, on a box. Um, and then Brad and I recorded it twice. So this is the fifth time that we, and I finally understood what I wanted. I wanted the vocals and everything to kind of have an overlapping quality. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. there's a lot of vocals and backing vocals on this record. But if you listen to the game, there's like three different leads coming in at different times. And that was one of the experimental games I was playing with on this record. Hi, I'm Liz Fair, and we're playing some songs off my new album, Soberish. You're watching and listening on the edge.
I know we're going to get cut sh short for time here. Um, but one thing that I would be remiss if I didn't talk to you about as a female is this this title that you have earned rightfully. And it's like, you know, you research you online and feminist trailblazer is something that continuously pops up. And so I wanted to ask you, when you look at the industry today, being that feminist trailblazer of the 90s and kind of, you know, being credited for creating a path and making a path for female artists and females in general, what do you think of the industry today? And like, are you proud? I am very proud and I consider myself on a continuum rather than being sort of the originator. I see all the the powerful women in rock that I looked to when I was growing up, you know, like uh, the pretenders or Blondie, or, you know, there was like a lot of women that I looked to that seemed fierce, like Joan Jett, people that were strong and up front and center. And it makes me really proud to be part of that lineage of women taking the lead position and artistically as well. I think it's really important to understand the contributions behind the scenes that these women have um, given to the music that we love so much. I love it. Is there any like young women artists right now that are kind of like in the beginning stages of their career that you're kind of watching unfold that you are a big fan of? Like, I'm curious, is there anyone out there right now that you're like, oh, I'm watching her and she's doing great stuff? Dude, all of them. Where could I start <laughs> I finish? I mean, like every single day I follow a new female artist, a, you know, usually young, but not always on Twitter and check out their latest single. I love that part of Twitter, that it's like my radio station for new music. I just hear mm -hmm. a song by an artist I've never heard of. And they say, oh, it's like Julian Baker. Or it's like Lucy Dacus, or it's like, you know, Billie Eilish, or it's like, you know, whoever it is, there's just endless amounts of young women coming up who have this total authorship over their image, their sound, their, their musicianship. It's, it's awe-inspiring for someone like me who came up when it was rare to even see a woman in a band at all, and she was usually a bass player and didn't say anything. Yeah, well, I mean, you have played such a huge part in that. So, I mean, it's funny because I turn around and if I were to ask any of those young artists, you know, they for sure would be dropping your name. So um, if you had any advice for any of them, what would it be? <laughs> oh, oh my God, uh, on the spot, on the spot. What would I say? What would I say? Read your own contracts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's good advice. That's good advice. That's what that is. <laughs> Well, I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you so much, Liz Fair, for chatting today. Brand new album, Soberish, is out June 4th. Latest single is in there. And we are just so excited and honored to have you hang out on the edge. Thank you, Meredith.